Hey y'all, this is Katie here at Holy Fire Scribble. I recently shared a video that showed you guys my fountain pen collection. I do have six of those pens currently inked and I wanted to give you guys uh, writing samples of those and then I wanted to share some scripture. I just want to spread his truth through his word and also just share with you guys little ways how God speaks to me and uh, confirms everything that he tells me. So let's get started with the video. I'm going to get out the pens that I do have inked. So all three of my Quebecos are inked. I'll put those up here in my ink sample mess. And then my three Twisbees are also inked. So let me show you the notebooks that I have. So this Loikstrom 1917 notebook, this is the notebook that I use on an everyday basis. So I take it to church, I do sermon notes, I do Bible study notes, um, quick little journal entries, which my journal entries are mainly prayers. Um, and then I also use it for recipes, workouts, um, to-do lists, checklists, things of that nature. But for this channel, I did want to purchase a Hobonichi because the Hobonichi uses um, Tomo River paper and of all these years that I've had fountain pens I've never used Tomo River paper and from everything that I've heard it's it's amazing and you can really see ink properties in the in the Hobonichi so um, I just got a regular notebook let's go ahead and get started with this so let me zoom you guys in so my first pen that I have here is my Caveco Frosted Sport in Natural Coconut. This is a medium nib. And the ink I am using is Robert Oster Cherry Blossom. So scripture. I did ask God what scripture should I start with? Um, because my Part of my part of my channel is not only talking about fountain pens, but truly is to share the word of God with everyone and to share the good news. And so, um, sitting down and thinking about what to share, it was a little bit intimidating at first. But once I realized that all I have to do is ask Him, and He would tell me, I did. And uh, my church, we recently started a Bible study that studies the events that happen in chronological order. And we've only gotten to the point um, with Abraham and Sarah, and so um, we haven't gone that far, but when I asked God where should I start with scripture on my channel, and it's almost like he was saying, duh, the beginning. I am doing a mix of recording myself live whenever I was doing this, and then also a voiceover. Um, I do want to read scripture to you all. I am writing in King James Version, but I will read it in different versions throughout this recording. Holy Spirit, come in to this place and fill my mouth with your words, and whatever needs to be shared, let it be shared. In the name of Jesus, touch lives, plant seeds, and allow this channel to water them. And this pen here is my Quebeco Frosted Sport in Sweet Banana. This is a broad nib, and the ink is Noodler's Cactus Fruit Eel. The creation. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, 
and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. The first day. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. I remember these being the first scriptures I learned about. However, when I stepped away from my faith between the years of 2010 and 2020, it seems like this basic understanding of who God is as the Creator was shaky. And I feel as a believer, this is the one belief that you have to have in order to believe the rest. He is the ultimate Creator. And for anyone who is listening that has doubt, I am praying, God, I am praying for these people, that they are able to see the truth and any doubt and disbelief is blown away by your mighty wind in the name of Jesus. The next pen I'm using is my Caveco Skyline Sport in Macchiato. This is also a medium nib. And this ink color is Pilot Oroshizuku in Momiji. In our natural mind, in our earthly eyes and ears, it's really easy to get caught up in the how. How did God create this beautiful planet? How did, create the, how did he create not only the planet, but the entire universe? And then when you start the hearing the noise of all the various theories, it's really easy to get lost in that. But regardless of the theories, we have to be 100% sold that this is the truth. The second day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. The next pen I'm writing with is my Twispy Eco in white with silver trim. This is in an extra fine. This is the only extra fine that I own. The ink I am using is Noodler's Black Swan and English Roses. The third day, and God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of waters called the seas. And God saw that it was good, and God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding the seed the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, and herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good, and the evening and the morning were the third day.
The next pen I'm using is my Twisby Eco in Jade. This is a broad nib. And I remember what it felt like to immediately switch from that extra fine to the broad. And I was so thankful because it was more effortless while writing and it overall was much more comfortable. I do like the extra fine. I don't necessarily have an issue with writing it. I don't hate it. But I feel more comfortable writing with the broad nib. And the ink I'm using is Sailor Yurobeku Amamoyo. I believe that's how you pronounce it. And now we are at the fourth day. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness and God saw that it was good and the evening and the morning were the fourth day I remember calling my cousin and best friend to discuss the scripture because I had to do a little bit of digging to understand what was different between the light God gave us on the fourth day versus the light that he created on the first. And through research and talking with my cousin, I realized that God was the light from day one through day three and then by day four there was this need for a physical light for the earth and it's important to know that not only it's well it's referenced through scripture there is spiritual light and spiritual darkness and physical light and physical darkness i am finally to my twisby eco in transparent yellow this is in a 1.1 millimeter stub. The ink I'm using is Diamine Coral. The fifth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creatures that hath life, and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created the whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and the winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good, and God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let fowl multiply the earth, and the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Every creature you see, he created. He created the DNA that allows every creature to be unique, that allows every creature to look and to sound and to be. I have given you a writing sample of all of the pens that I have inked right now. So I'm just picking and choosing which one I want to write with and I grabbed my 
Caveco Frosted Sport and Sweet Banana with the Cactus Fruit Eel ink. I thought that it was really beautiful and very easy to write with. So here we are at the sixth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping things, and beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And then the creation of man. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. I want to pause right here and talk about what it means when God said, Let us make man in our image. God is three in one. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And he makes us the same way. We are spirit, soul, and body. Our likeness is in his identity of Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So let's continue. And let them have dominion over the fish of the seas, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he, him. Male and female created he, them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And all of that is Genesis 1, 1 through 28. So, I didn't just want to provide scripture from Genesis I wanted to see scripture throughout the Bible that discussed the beginning. And remember, I had this hour-long conversation just about two verses with my cousin. And the next day, during my quiet time, I woke up and I just simply said, God, show me something beautiful. And the Bible that I usually use, I left it in my husband's truck. So I had my King James Version I just remember putting my thumb through it where I thought the Psalms and Proverbs would be, but I was incorrect because I'm not really used to that Bible, so I just picked my hand and picked a section of the Bible and I turned it again, and there was this scripture that stuck out because it was about God's magnificent creation. I wanted to look at the scripture in the Passion Translation reading from that translation as well. This section of Psalms is labeled Our Creator's Compassion. Everything I am will bless the Lord. Oh Lord my God, your greatness takes my breath away, overwhelming me by your majesty, beauty, and splendor. And here's scripture that stuck out to me that I knew God was speaking to me and confirming this excitement I had of discovering the light. It says, You wrap yourself with a shimmering, glistening light. You wear sunshine like a garment of glory. You stretch out the starry skies like a tapestry. You build your balconies with light beams and ride as king on a chariot you made from clouds. You fly upon the wings of the wind. You make your messengers into winds of the spirit, and all your ministers become flames of fire. You, our creator, formed the earth, and you hold it all together so it will never fall apart. You poured the ocean depths over the planet, submerging the mountains beneath. Yet at the sound of your thunder shout, the water 
waters all fled away, filling the deep with seas. The mountains rose and valleys sank to the levels you decreed for them. Then you set a boundary line for the, for the seas and commanded them not to trespass. You sent springs cascading through the valleys, flowing freely between the mountains and the hills. You provide drink for every living thing. Men and beasts have their thirsts quenched because of you. The birds build nests near the tranquil streams, chirping their joyous songs from their branches above. From your kindness, you send the rain to water the mountains from the upper rims of your palace. Your goodness brings forth fruit for all to enjoy. Your compassion brings the earth's harvest, feeding the hungry. You cause the grass to grow for livestock, along with the fruit, grains, and vegetables to all mankind. You provide sweet wine to gladden hearts. You give us daily bread to sustain life, giving us glowing health for our bodies. The trees of the Lord drink until they are satisfied. Lebanon's lofty trees stand tall right where you planted them. Within their branches you provide for birds a place to build their nests. Even herons find a home in the cypress trees. You make the high mountains a home for wild goats in the rocky crag where the rock badgers burrow. You made the moon to mark the months and the sun to measure the days. You turn off the light and it becomes night and all the beasts of the forest come out to prowl. The mighty lions roar for their dinner, but it's you, God, who feeds them all. At sunrise, they slink back to their dens to crouch down in the shadows. Then man goes out to his labor and toil working from dawn to dusk. Oh Lord, what an amazing variety in all you have created. Wild and wonderful in this world you have made, while wisdom was there at your side. I think this is such a beautiful love letter written to God about his wonderful creation and loving and appreciating the intricate relationship everything has with one another not only animal to animal man to animal but also our relationship with the the atmosphere with the rain with the ground i believe it's beautiful this world is full of so many creatures yet each belongs the sea, so vast, so wide and deep, swarming with countless forms of sea life, both small and great. Trading ships glide through the high seas, and look, there are massive whales bounding upon the waves. All the creatures wait expectantly for you to give them their food as you determine. You come near and they all gather around, feasting from your open hands, and each is satisfied from your abundant supply. But if you were to withhold from them and turn away, they would all panic. And when you choose to take away their breath, each one dies and returns to the dust. When you release your spirit wind, life is created, ready to replenish life upon the earth. May God's glorious splendor endure forever. May the Lord take joy and pleasure in all that he has made, for the earth's overseer has the power to make it tremble. Just a touch of his finger and volcanoes erupt as the earth shakes and melts. It will sing my song to the Lord as long as I live. Every day I will sing praises to God. May you be pleased with every sweet thought I have about you, for you are the source of my joy and gladness. Now let all the sinners be swept from the earth, but I will keep praising you, my Lord, 
with all that is within me, my joyous, blissful shouts of hallelujah are all because of you. This is Psalm 104, 1 through 35. I believe I mentioned in a previous video that my family recently went to the beach. Um, we like to go to Port Aransas, Texas, and obviously the Gulf of Mexico is not some crystal clear blue water, yet I stood in the sand and I was still blown away. I, uh, my husband and I, I can't believe I'm sharing this, but my husband and I, we took our daughter to the Texas State Aquarium and we watched the dolphin show. And the music that they were playing, I think, along with just the magnificent creature of the dolphin, it, it, it brought me to tears because I was just so blown away at the beautiful creation that God made. And yet, all of it is so fragile. And you know, scripture says that we are to take dominion over it and we're to, we are to subdue it. We are to take care of it and to take pleasure in it. And that's the reason why I chose this scripture because it just marvels at the wonderful and mighty work he did that he gave to us. He created all of this for mankind to enjoy and to also remember him because something this great could only be created by our Heavenly Father. And here is another scripture. With your hands you once formed the foundations of the earth and handcrafted the heavens above. Psalm 102, 25. Our God created the heaven and the earth. He did it. He did it all. Then God led me to this scripture, which I think is so important. I don't know if it was because of my immaturity or just simply my lack of understanding, but it's almost as if when you hear about the birth of Jesus, you think of Jesus as an afterthought, that he created Jesus after seeing how the world became since the fall. But the scripture reminds us of the truth. The word was God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. He was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of the light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh unto the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the children of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John 1, 1 through 14. Jesus is the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus, God, Holy Spirit, they are three in one. As a believer, we have to understand that one plus one plus one does not equal three, but one plus one plus one equals one. Jesus was not an afterthought. He was there in the beginning 
when God decided to create the heaven and the earth. And when you believe in him, you live eternally in the light of God. This scripture that I am writing now, in hope of eternal life, which God, that cannot lie, promised before the world began. Titus 1-2. And then, this last scripture, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, Revelation 22-13. In the beginning, God knew, Jesus knew what needed to be done in hope of receiving that eternal life. And the belief of what he did for us on the cross, we live eternally in his glory and in his light. If you are enjoying this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. I pray that the word of God has blessed you today, and I pray that it draws you closer to him and let his truth catch fire in your heart. Thanks for joining me here at Holy Fire Scribble.